before we uh, jump too far ahead, man, I understand that before you even got down with uh, with fam or you link with uh, Shawty, Shawty Thuggy, Shawty P, you had put out a cassette independently right. while you were in uh, high school, like 11th or 12th grade, right. and you made like a nice chunk of change, you right. know what I'm saying? And this is around the time while you still were playing sports. Right, 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 right. So talk about like, man, how did you make that... Um, what what drove you to make the decision to uh, really like record music, although you were you know a talented athlete, you know what I mean? <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna tell you this, bro. This how this this how that came about. You get the exclusive on this shit right here, bro. So let me say it just like this in a nutshell, and I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it short. So at the time, I would be what you consider a so-called high school basketball star. You for sure, me? for sure. So, in this particular situation right here, I'm in 12th grade, right? I, I went to City High School in North Chattanooga. We had a game this this particular year against a Brainerd High School at Brainerd. You follow what I'm saying? So, at this game at Brainerd, now keep in mind, I've been playing high school ball all these years. This, this, this is 11th grade right here. Every time I went, I'm dressed now. I got a uniform with shorts that come to my knees. You feel me? The regular shorts come to my knees. I'm, I'm, a, I'm 6'3", I'm a tall dude. You feel me? So I got shorts that come to my knees. For for whatever reason, this game right here, shout out to Coach Higgins. Much love Coach Higgins. I just saw Coach Higgins. Much love Coach Higgins. So this game right here for City versus Brainerd at Brainerd High School, which is going to be everybody's coming out for this, right? This is a... a, 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 a a, a big game right here. Man, shout out to Brandon, man. He tell me, Coach Higgins tell me, you got to wear them shorts right there for this game. Them shorts you're talking about, these shorts come right here. Oh, so back in these, what we call like nut cutters, like booty the, huggers. The, you the feel 50s me? or the 60s. Though. Yeah, the shorts of Max Johnson. <laughs> Mr. 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 Back yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm 6'3". I got shorts that I've been wearing the whole year to come to my knees. You follow what I'm saying? For some reason, you want me to wear these shorts that come, that come to my half thigh. I'm like, man, I'm not finna do that. Then we finna play Brainerd? The whole city coming out for this game right here. You follow what I'm saying? He's like, well, you gotta wear them shorts, son. You ain't gonna play. I'm like, man, I'm not finna wear them shorts. Well, if you don't wear them shorts, then you can sit the game out. Well, fuck it. I'm finna sit the game out. I'm not finna, wear, I'm not finna come out to a compassionate crowd with some shorts that come pretty much to my nuts. I mean, I ain't doing that. That ain't happening. You follow what I'm saying? That's a no-go. It ain't happening. You feel this or no, but it ain't happening. Well, if you don't, if you ain't gonna wear that, then you uh, don't play the game, and then go, go sit on the bench. All right, fuck it. I'm sitting on the bench then. I don't feel what those shorts that come right here. When I know for a fact you got shorts that fit me. You follow what I'm saying? Why do that? I don't know what you on, but why do that? You follow what I'm saying? So I didn't do it. So he, he made me sit the game out or whatever. You feel me? So I set the game out. Then played the City versus Brandon game, and after that, I was like, fuck it, I ain't playing no more. He put me off the team. You feel me? So when he put me off the team, this is 11th grade right here. The following, the following year is, is senior year, 12th grade. So when it's coming for, uh, for senior year, I'm like, you know what? I ain't finna go, go out for a basketball team this year. Fuck that shit. But I had this song I had wrote months ago, called Me, Myself, and I, that, that, that I didn't have a beat for. But I had a song wrote, three verses, a hook and all of that, but I didn't have a beat for it. So I ended up meeting with this uh, producer, rest in peace, a guy named Chip. I ended up meeting with him or whatever, a guy from out the west side, and uh, he gave me a few beats on the cassette tape. I can't remember who produced the beat, but he gave me like four or five beats on the cassette tape. And out of them four or five beats, one of the beats matched the song for me, myself, and I. That I had been sitting on for like two or three years, you follow what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, I been had this song. Now I got a beat for it. You feel what I'm saying? So I took that beat. And then around December of 97, mm -hmm. China High School had a talent show, a, nation, a, a citywide talent show. Citywide meaning, even though the show was, was hosted at China High School, they, they allowed people from China High School, Brandon High School, City High School and Howard High School to end the talent show. So, so I'm thinking to myself, I got a song I wrote a few years ago. I finally found a beat for it. I'm finna get in this talent show and do this song. You feel me? 
I had no idea about the politics of the show. I didn't give a fuck about women. My whole thing was I'm finna get up here and just do this song and let people know that I know how to rap. You feel what I'm saying? My guy up and did that song and I left after I did the song. I didn't even say to the end of the talent show. So I, I didn't know who won. You feel me? I got up and did the song and I left. This is on a Friday right here. Keep in mind, this is on a Friday. I got up in the talent show, did the song, and then and then stay to the end of the talent show. You feel me? Because I I, 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 really, I really did, I really, on my mama, I really did not care about winning. My whole point is to get up and just rap this song and rock the crowd and let people know I'm all know how to rap. That was, that was my whole goal. I didn't give a fuck about winning this shit. This is on a Friday. So I did the show, did my thing, and I left. Before the show was over with. Monday morning, the same people from China High School, Papa City High School, which is my high school, with a trophy saying, hey, that show you did Friday, even though you left early before, before the end of the show, you won first place for best rep. I'm like, oh, really? Came with a trophy this big right here. That same trophy is right there in my living room. You feel mm -hmm. me? Came with a trophy this big saying, the, the show you did Friday, that you left early for and then stay to the end of, you won first place for that. When we did the, uh, the, the uh, judge from the crowd, you won first place for that. I'm like, okay, damn. So they brought me a trophy to my school. I got first place, best rep, li listed as Mac Mall. You feel me? That was my name back then, Mac Mall. Listed as Mac Mall. So about three months later, I came up with a cassette tape. Hmm. Mall the Pimp featuring Battleground Soldiers and Golden. I paid $600 to press up 300 cassette tape, sold them five hours a piece. That was my first $1,500 off a of rap right there. And from that point on, I knew this is what I need to pursue. Um, so, but fast forward, so the first 1500 you know what I'm saying, off the music, and then you, you pretty much knew, like, this is what you wanted to do. Right. And uh, so around this time, that's when uh, Shawty Thuggy is, is, is knocking on your door, so on and so forth. Right. Um, I didn't know that you and him started Fam Records together. Yeah. You know, but um, for the viewers who may not be familiar with Fam Records or just the Chattanooga rap scene, Talk about like that time and just how big Fam Records ended up becoming. You know what I'm saying in the city of Chattanooga and the surrounding areas. Like even to the point where major record labels like Universal Records were, were reaching out. You know what I'm saying to do business. You know that's that's major, dog. Here go here go the thing. Uh, when I was with my buzz solo as an independent artist, right? I had a cassette tape out, and that was pretty much I had I had to sit on I had to sit on lock. And keep in mind, I made the time. I'm 18 years old, so I'm in high school. So I got the high schools on lock, and then the fact that I'm a street nigga at heart, I had the streets on lock. You follow what I'm saying? So I got the high schools on lock, I got the streets on lock. You follow what I'm saying? And this is 1998 right here. This one, he's just come home from from, uh, from state prison from a robbery charge. He had just did five years, right? So he's coming home. Charlotte Douglas' mindset is, is, is I want to get into the rap game, I want to do music. You feel me? But he's from the west side. So he's come home to come home from prison to the west side and this this young west side nigga who got the streets on lock, which would be me. You follow what I'm saying? So like man, who is this nigga right here? In his mind, who is this nigga right here who got the streets on lock? And, and in my mind, I've been on who you are, bro. I've been hearing your name for years in the street, just ringing bells for robbing and shooting and all this old shit like this. Penitentiary. So I've been on who you are, you feel me? So I've been heard about you. You were just now hearing about me. You follow what I'm saying? So uh, he approached me one morning like, man, hey man, I heard about the tape. I, I was on, I'm, I'm on my way to high school one morning. It's like, uh, I'm still going to see the high school. It's like 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm on my way to high school. I'm pulling out the parking lot. He pulled me out. Blah, 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 flag me down, blowing his horn off. So he had a Nova at the time. What you was driving in back then? A 7.3 Cadillac with 14s in the back seat. <laughs> Bumping. Really? He ain't a Nova at the time. On the west side, he saw me bump, 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 flag me down. What's up, bro? Hey, man, I heard about the tape you did, man. That little cassette tape you got out, man. That shit bumped, man. Uh, you know I just got the pen, right? Yeah, I know you are. Yeah, I know, I know that, yeah. I'm trying to get in the studio, too, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when the next time you going to the studio? Coincidentally, I was going to the studio the next day at like 8 o'clock at night at Block Life Combined Styles. You feel me? So, uh... 
I'm, I'm going to see you tomorrow, bro. Man, come with me. We, we can do this and that, blah, 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 blah. He came with me. We did a few little songs that never came out. But that studio session that we did, when them songs never came out, that was us building our chemistry right there. And that was us building our little one-on-one -on -one rapport. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? So uh, we did that. At the time, I'm still still feeding out the buzz from the cassette tape that I got that's in the street. You follow what I'm saying? He's seeing this. He's seeing this like, man, this thing here, this little young nigga's going in. You know what I'm saying? He uh, took an a extra attraction to me because of that. You follow what I'm saying? So, uh, and this, this is still when I'm in high school, 98. The summer of 98, after I graduated, me and him came together and started just pushing hard. And that's where Fan Records came from, bro. Mm. You feel me? <coughs> so, so, it was a brainchild of both of y'all's? Yes. The whole thing with Fan Records was this. It was going to be his label. He was the CEO and the boss. It was going to be his label. And I was going to be the first official artist assigned to the label. And, what this, I'm and this is around the time while you graduated high school, you went to college at MTSU. I graduated high school before I went to college. So I graduated high school in May of 98 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the summer of 98 leading up until the fall semester of college, we was just pushing fam records. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we pushed fam records on the strength of, okay, Fan Brothers and Charlotte P's or Charlotte Douglas label, but Ma was the first official artist on the label. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So all the summer after high school, leading up until college, it was just Ma and Charlotte, Fan Brothers, Fan Brothers, Fan Brothers, Fan Brothers. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, and around the time, I mean, for uh, like like for those who don't know, Fan Records, Fam is an acronym for Fuck a Mask. Fuck a Mask. Yeah. Did y'all come up with that meaning together, or was that solely you or him? Well, how did that come about? Him. I can't take credit for that. How did that come about, man? That was straight up him. I, I, I cannot take credit for that. That was straight up him. And what fam came from, fuck him ass meaning. Well, he was like robbing people bare face? Yes. Me and Charlotte made it in 98, 97, 98. From 92 to 97, he was in the Fed, I mean, in the state pen on robbery and, uh, and shooting charges. You follow what I'm saying? He was known back in his street days for robbing niggas open face without a mask. You feel me? That was his thing. He put up on your, put the put put uh, put his pistol in your face without a mask on open face. You feel me? So when it comes to '98, '97, he started Fam Records. Fam Records stood for F A M. F A M stood for Fuck a Mask. And people who knew him in the street knew Fuck a Mask meant when I was out here doing negative before I became positive. I was robbing y'all niggas without a mask.